Hi, uh, my name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. I'm a pulmonary pathologist at the Cleveland Clinic. And today I'm going to show you two very interesting cases that are interesting both from the point of view of um, lung pathology in general as well as frozen section pathology, which will come into play in the second case. So um, the first case I'd like to show you is this one that's being shown by whole slide imaging. Um, the lesion was actually a lung nodule and the uh, surgical lung biopsy that you see here was done to rule out malignancy. Um, so at low magnification you can see there's lung parenchyma, normal lung parenchyma at the top of the image and you can see an interlobular septum there and as you go lower you're beginning to go into this lung nodule. You can see that the periphery of the nodule is cellular and the center of the nodule even at this low magnification appears necrotic. So I'm going to show you some details of what this is. Let's go into the necrosis first. Just a very bland kind of necrosis, the kind that you might expect in tuberculosis or in non-tubercular mycobacterial infection or in fungal infections. It's mostly pink but has a little bit of a dirty feel to it. And then as you go to the periphery of the lesion, which is the cellular part, you can see that the periphery is granulomatous. And why I say that is that the cells are actually um, epithelioid histiocytes that are tightly clustered together. Uh, and there are a few multinucleated giant cells, but of course you don't need a multinucleated giant cell to call something a granuloma because uh, by definition granulomas are clusters or tight clusters of epithelioid giant cells. So this lesion is a necrotizing granuloma and as most of you know, the differential diagnosis of a necrotizing granuloma first and foremost includes infection, mycobacterial or fungal infection. And of course you can't see mycobacteria on an H&E stained section, but you should always look around to see if you can see fungi on the H&E stain section um, and some of them you can. So for example, out of the four most common fungi that you see in these necrotizing granulomas, which is histoplasma, cryptococcus, blastomyces and coccidioides, the last three can all be seen on H&E stain sections. So what you should do in case like this is go to the necrosis and just look on H&E. Can you see the fungus? So in this particular case, I can't see anything and I'll assure you that uh, uh, looking at the highest possible magnification with a, you know, with a 40x or with oil immersion, you will not be able to see any organisms in this case. So this is basically a necrotizing granuloma in which no organisms are visible uh, in the central necrosis on high magnification on H&E. So let me show you now the corresponding GMS stain. So here's the GMS stain and that's Grocot methanamine silver. It's a stain for fungal organisms. And you see this is the same section that I showed you before and I'll show you this uh, spot next to the crack and you can see I'm going to higher magnification within the necrotic area and as you know on GMS black is the color that fungal organisms take and you can see there are numerous numerous histoplasma organisms here within the necrosis. Uh, these are small uh, very very tiny yeasts with narrow base budding they are oval to round in shape it's not um, the best morphology that you're seeing here on the um, whole slide image, but on um, oil immersion, you can see beautifully the narrow base budding um, and the uh, characteristic uniform size and shape of these organisms. So this lesion is actually a histoplasmoma. So if I can go back to the um, H&E, this lesion is a histoplasmoma or a necrotizing granuloma caused by histoplasmosis in the lung. These lesions are very common where I practice here in Cleveland, Ohio and in many places in the United States. And what this is, is an infection caused by histoplasma organisms in the lung that the lung has basically killed off all the organisms. There's a lot of literature to show that if you culture these, this uh, particular type of uh, histoplasmosis, the organisms virtually never grow out because they're already killed off by the inflammatory reaction. Uh, these lesions can be PET positive, the nodules can be speculated, they can grow, so they can mimic lung cancer on, um, on many different levels. So this is really a very good news for the patient. This is not only an infection, but this is an infection that is, is virtually cured already by the body and in most cases does not require treatment, especially if the patient is asymptomatic. This is basically a, a very good piece of news for the patient, something that I love. One of the greatest things about non-neoplastic lung pathology is you have the chance to give the patient good news in, in some instances. Now we move to case number two. And actually I'm going to show you the uh, permanent section of this, but the, fro the diagnosis was actually uh, correctly made even on frozen section uh, pathology. And this is also a lung nodule, very similar to the other one. And you can see that uh, the pleura is up here, 
that little line on the top of the image. And then this is a subpleural nodule, so the base is on the pleura, but the nodule is within the lung. And you can see a blood vessel here to the left of it. One difference from the previous case is there is no necrosis here. But let's go to higher magnification and you'll see that the thing actually does have lots of multinucleated giant cells and epithelioid histiocytes, especially multinucleated giant cells. So this lesion is actually granulomatous. It does have lots and lots of these large multinucleated giant cells and it also has a, a mix of fibrosis and chronic inflammation including lots of plasma cells. So it, there's a lot of chronic inflammation as well as multinucleated giant cells. But the thing here that gives away the diagnosis even on an h and &E stained section is that you can actually see right on h and &E, and I'll show you here, you can see large multinucleated giant cells with organisms within them. And this is in contrast to the previous case that I showed you where you couldn't see the organisms within the necrosis and that's actually characteristic of uh, histoplasmomas. In cryptococcus, which is what this is, you can actually see cryptococcal yeast right on the h and &E. Now they can be sometimes difficult to see because the organism has a very light gray staining cell wall. But here let me put the arrow on one of the organisms. So that is a cryptococcus yeast. It has a very light gray cell wall. It has a round or slightly oval shape and it has a space around it which is actually uh, in my opinion a, a retraction artifact um, uh, that is caused uh, by the cytoplasm of the surrounding cell pulling away from it. So you can see many different cryptococcus yeast here. Another characteristic feature of cryptococcus is that there is a lot of size variation. If you remember from the previous case histoplasma does not vary much in size but cryptococcus does. So for example here is a really big yeast and here is a really small one. Again here is a really big yeast in that space and then here is a really small one. So that pleomorphism or variation in size is really characteristic of cryptococcus. So for me this is cryptococcus right on the H&E. I do not need a GMS stain. Um, I do not need, I, I do not need cultures, I do not need anything else. But you know, if you wanted confirmation, one of the things that you can do in these cases is you can do a mucicarmine stain. And the mucicarmine stain, I will caution you, is helpful only if it is positive. So if it is positive, it helps because cryptococcus is positive for mucicarmine. But as you can see in this image, not all the organisms are uniformly positive. There is only very weak staining here and some of the organisms are negative but as you move from field to field you will see some organisms that are clearly positive on the mucicarmine and therefore helping to confirm the diagnosis. Now I will caution you here's a here's a very nice example of mucicarmine positive organisms in this case. Now I will caution you that you will as you see more more cases of cryptococcus in your career you will definitely see cases of cryptococcus that are negative by mucicarmine and negative staining on mucicarmine does not exclude the diagnosis. But certainly as I shown here, if you do have a positive mucicarmine stain that does help to confirm the diagnosis. And in this case, uh, the diagnosis was actually made on frozen section and that um, the, the surgeon's question actually was is this benign or malignant. Um, the course of action being if it is malignant we will proceed to lobectomy and if it is benign we will stop here. So um, it was good that the diagnosis was made at the time of frozen section. So a lobectomy was averted and the patient had a good outcome. So two cases that I have shown you today here are two common forms of fungal infection that result in granulomatous inflammation in the lung and I hope you enjoyed the case. Thank you very much.